What do you see in these faces? Anguish, determination, innocence, just some of the words painted in my mind by the Blank Slate Monument. I haven't lived the African-American experience. I've only observed from afar. 39-year-old Ghanaian artist and activist Kwame Akoto Bamfo's work examines restorative justice for people of African descent around the world. He created this sculpture, a powerful collection of moments telling the story of African-Americans. It's trying to highlight everything that we have been through, our ancestors have been through, the struggle and then the freedom tradition that they've been a part of and that we are continuing. The statue also designed to be a counter-narrative in a country once awash in Confederate monuments. It has no base, no pedestal, which Okoto Bamfo says is a symbol of white privilege. It's simply a stack of bodies flush against the ground, an African slave shackled a foot on his face, but he's not crushed. He's supporting. We have a Union soldier standing on the very body of his enslaved ancestor. And then he continues to carry the current generation who also has a baby on her back. The soldier with a noose around his neck still holding a tattered American flag and uplifting an activist mother. It is a call to action that your voice now will make you another body on which your descendants can step on to reach higher. At the very top, a blank slate, a digital screen on which anyone who sees the statue can project a message, a reaction, a word about life in America. Sue Johnson runs the NIA Cultural Center in Galveston, Texas. She helped bring the Blank Slate Monument here to her hometown. I thought that I was going to be jubilant, but it was, it's kind of dark, mm. you know, but hopeful at the same time. The feature of the Blank Slate that allows the viewers to put a message out there, that's just another opportunity for free speech which I think is so important, especially in this time. For the past two years, the statue has traveled the U.S., evoking emotions from Pittsburgh to Atlanta, from New York's Times Square to the nation's capital. Everywhere it's gone, drawing crowds, making people think. It's very inspirational. It has a lot of messages speaking through it. It looks like they're stepping on one another, but in fact they're building on each other's sacrifices. And the visual is, to me, conflicting about that very powerful piece. It's almost like they're demanding to be heard, especially yeah, the lady and, at the top. And that we have to help each other progress forward. Wow. That's what I get from it. The Blank Slate Monument ends its U.S. tour here in Galveston, the same city where the ending of slavery in America ended more than two years after the Emancipation Proclamation. On June 19, 1865, federal ships sailed into Galveston Bay. They were carrying Union Army soldiers, including thousands of black soldiers. They were also carrying a message of freedom and the means to enforce it. That day is what we now call Juneteenth. Galveston historian Sam Collins. There was not a piece of paper that freed the enslaved people of Texas, but the men with the guns. Collins says there was no grand announcement of freedom, rather soldiers mass printing and posting the famed General Order No. 3 changed life in Texas. They were, uh, as some say, free-ish, because in the order it also says the former enslaved are to remain at their present homes and work for wages. The change was indeed celebrated and still is generations later. <laughs> A Juneteenth parade in the streets of Galveston this weekend. Families, whole communities gathering in Jubilee with an eye on their ancestry. We honor their memory when we commemorate Juneteenth every year. And we've been doing it here in Galveston for 158 years. Collins now leading the effort to establish an international Juneteenth museum in Galveston. His team working to find a buyer for the Blank Slate Monument so it can stay in this history-rich city. We're working to become a more perfect union by fixing the cracks in the foundation of our storytelling. And this expands the narrative about this history, not only here in Galveston, but in America. Wow, what an incredible story. And Aaron Gilchrist joins us now. Aaron, I mean, such unforgettable images that the hand holding the foot, uh, the lack of a pedestal. Uh, I imagine it's something to see in real life there. What happens to that statue after this, this stop there in Galveston? It really does leave an impression for sure, Gotti. Uh, right now, the statue is supposed to be in Galveston until July 5th. It will likely stay there a little bit longer, but the uh, folks behind this effort tell me that they have been had sponsors uh, as, as it's toured the country. Right now, they plan to put it in storage for the summer uh, while they look for a buyer. 
It, it, also incredible to hear so many people uh, talking about looking at that. I, I got to ask, I mean, you were there when you first saw that statue. What, what went through your mind? You know, it, it definitely uh, causes you to pause when you, when you first see that face of the uh, enslaved person at the bottom of the statue. It, it is jarring. It is something that stirs up a lot of emotion. Uh, I can tell you I felt sad initially looking at it. And then you sort of think about the story uh, as you go up the, st the sculpture and you realize that there's uh, a message of hope at the, at the top of that sculpture. Uh, and it's one that people who organize this want to be carried out across the country as the, the statue potentially uh, continues on in, in a museum possibly here in the U.S. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.